welcome to this wonderful evening this is the 49th uh, friday session of smith fit and i am very excited for you know the next two three sessions because we will complete one entire year of friday sessions so i think that would be great and uh, we will also have some performances from the smith fitters i think <laughs> for that so uh, with that i think uh, i would like to welcome hector here who is professor hector because he has been a professor of uh, philosophy for about 15 20 years now and he has also been the principal of mercedes benz international school for for a few years and i think now his prime focus is on the medicinal forest that he is developing it's a it's a huge project and uh, he will talk to us about medicinal plants and weeds as medicine so let's begin with a few exercises with kt as usual so kt is also here so kt let's let's go good evening everybody good evening good evening everybody is uh, all ready as long as you have a little bit of space around you and you're dressed comfortably um, everybody can take part okay so feel free to just move some furniture around if you need to and get ready okay we're going to start with some very simple stretches as usual what we're going to do is we're going to do a forward bend reach to the left then come on up forward bend to the right and come on very easy don't need to give any jerks don't need to hold bend forward go as low as you can inhale exhale as you go down come back up keep moving okay great next one now we're going to pick up our left knee give it a nice tight hug and drop it down then up your right knee give it a nice tight hug and drop it down simple again you can keep moving but you want to intensify that stretch a little bit you will lift up on your toes on the leg that comes Okay, we're going to do the exact opposite now. You put behind you, stretch your thigh, and drop that back down. Raise upper arm nice and high. And relax. Okay, for the next one, we're going to take a nice long step in the front, bend forward, twist. Back leg is on the floor, so bend forward, twist, come back, change the leg, bend forward, twist, and come back. We're doing five per side. Leg goes forward. It's okay if your knee bends a little bit. Twist. Step back, step forward, twist, and step back. Of course, if you want to be really adventurous, you can take the back leg up. But I don't suggest you do that without support. If you have support of a wall or a table on the side, you can then raise the back leg. But without support, I don't suggest you do this. Intent is to twist the spine. And all right. So everyone's done five and five. We we'll change now. We're going to work on the hips. So we're going to lift the leg to the side. Lift the same one in the front. This time, not using your arms, just using these small hip flexor muscles here that get really short and tight because we spend so much time sitting. So we're going to activate those muscles today. Just working on one leg as now, and balancing on the other. Okay. 
Let's try that on the other leg now. Raise to the side, raise to the front. Raise on the side and in the front. And like this. The next few, we're going to sit down on the floor. I hope that's okay. If you have a mat, you can always use a mat. If you uh, would rather be sitting on a chair, you could also try sitting on a chair and doing this. That's okay. From here, we're just going to try not to lean back too far. We're going to raise our right leg up and make small circles outwards. You can also do the seated on a chair, that's okay. And if you start feeling a slight burn here, just take a break, relax and begin. Let's change the leg, we're going left leg. Going circles again, upwards. Great. From here, uh, if you're on a chair, you'll repeat these. If you have the space on the floor, we're going to go wide. Not too wide, just a little bit. Our hands go around our right leg. We lift up and just in a different position. Try. If making circles is very challenging, you can just raise up and down. If you want to make it more easier, just lean back a little bit and perform this. Want to make it challenging, just lean forward a little bit. And after 10, let's change the leg, raise up and down again. If you're on the chair, you have to keep your legs in the front. Of the knees. We're going to do these one more time. Okay, if you're ready, hands on the side or a little back if you need to. Raise up and down this way instead of making circles. And once you finish 10, change the leg to the upper way. Now we're going to stretch this same muscle out that we've activated. All we're going to do is have the left leg in the front, take a step behind with the right leg till it's crossed behind my leg, and we're just going to reach up. So left leg in the front, right leg goes behind, and I just reach up to let the stretch across the hip and the back. You don't even have to use the wall as long as you feel stable. And then down. Now right leg in the front, left leg goes behind, and I reach up. All the on the wall or this support. Relax. Last one now. Just going to stretch this leg back. You can always have your hands again for support on the side. Or the back leg is straight. I'm stretching the hip here, leaning forward into it, staying upright. We don't want to overdo the arch, but staying upright here. And let's change the leg. Again, pressing forward with the hip, hold something if you need to.
Okay, super. Thanks for that. Quick short warm up that everyone participated in. Back over to Rudrakshi and Hector. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Katie. Thank you. So, I think we'll we'll actually begin with um, with Hector's, uh, you know, his biodiversity uh, Vanna Vihar. So we will come to that a little later, but uh, we will begin with a brief introduction about him as to how he has moved from being a professor of philosophy to being a principal and also this part of, you know, in exploring the medicinal plants and finding out what is unique in every plant. So when we were talking, he said that there is nothing that goes waste. There are no weeds. So there is nothing that is wasted from nature. And all the plants have something unique in them which can be used either as food or as medicine. So Hector, I would, uh, I would like you to comment on this. Yeah, certainly. Um, I have a presentation. Would you like me to start with the presentation? Would, yeah, sure, would I sure. be able to present? Yes, yes, yes. We can make you the co-host. Sejal, that's... Yeah, he can present, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, if you can, then I'll just share my screen. Yeah, you can present, yeah. You can do it, yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay, uh, so so good evening, everyone. Uh, and I'm really, really happy to spend this few minutes uh, with, with the Smithfit community. Um, I've heard of and read about all the wonderful uh, things that you all are into, okay? And I'm happy that, uh, you know, I have this opportunity to, to kind of share a few of my insights with you. Uh, as uh, uh, Rudrakshi, uh, uh, you know, said, uh, it's been a very interesting journey, okay? And I want to begin by talking about that journey and therefore I've used the metaphor of a walk, okay? And a walk in the forest, okay? Because uh, forests are very, very, very interesting, okay? And there've been uh, some things that I have found very, very fascinating in my life, okay? Yeah, so uh, the first slide there, I, I have just put, you know, farming because uh, uh, like many people in this country and I think more, a lot of you as well, uh, we come from, uh, you know, an agrarian background. Okay, so my grandparents were farmers, but they were also uh, into medicinal plants. Okay, and so I get a lot of inspiration from my uh, grandfather on my mother's side and my grandmother on my father's side, okay, who were very well renowned herbalists, okay, who used herbs to treat uh, disease and were well known for that. Unfortunately, in my generation, no one took it forward. And so I thought, you know, that I should be spending time doing this simply because. Uh, I, I kind of uh, had a love for nature right from the beginning, okay, yeah, right from uh, very, very early times, okay, uh, I had this very uh, deep connect with, with nature, all right, and I should have done botany in my life, okay, I should have studied botany, but somewhere when I was 17 years old, I by mistake got introduced to philosophy, <laughs> okay, and that started a very different journey where I went on to do my MAM, fill everything in philosophy, and became a teacher and for almost 20, 25 years, uh, both Eastern and Western philosophy. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so along the way, I kept my love for plants going. Okay. Right through, right through uh, every weekend was spent uh, with nature. Okay. And uh, you see a bee box there. I have been doing beekeeping since my childhood. I have a beehive here in Baner, Pune, where I live. Uh, the bees are making excellent honey even in the city. Okay, so so that's something. And the, and the picture on the right that you see is something that happens in my hedge here. We grow a lot of our own food even today. Okay, uh, this was during the lockdown. In fact, our garden gave us uh, most of the food that, that we needed. And we were actually supplying vegetables to all our neighbors. Okay, so so it, it's a pretty fascinating aspect of my life that I didn't let go of this love for plants, okay? And even my philosophy thesis was on ecology, okay? And I used to teach a very popular course called the philosophy of nature, work, and technology, okay? How these three interact in our lives, okay? Nature, work, and technology, but more about that later, okay? Yeah, so yeah, so I ended up being a teacher of philosophy, and then, uh, you know, I was uh, 
I taught at Mahindra World College for 10 years. Uh, then I went to uh, Flame University where I taught philosophy for, for, for another four years. And then Mercedes-Benz School came calling and I went, to, went on to become their principal for, for, for four years. And, and uh, all along on weekends, I always did plants. Okay, But the problem was something that, is, that uh, a lot of us probably have experienced. Okay, That when it comes to plants, no one is ready to pay you. Okay, They all want free advice. Okay, And so there was no opportunity for me to really kind of earn a living by just doing plants. Okay, so I had to do all this, but, but, you know, finally in 2016, okay, I got this opportunity where somebody was ready to actually pay me to, to kind of, uh, you know, build a forest. Okay. And that was my life's dream because all along I have done that. Okay. So when I was at the Mahindra World College, I got the opportunity to build a forest. Okay. They had 172 acres of barren land. So I, I kind of suggested to Anand Mahindra that he should fund this forest. Okay. And we set up a biodiversity park and a, and a forest reserve. It is a thriving forest. Now, when I joined that campus, there was one tree. Okay, and I think I have a few pictures of that. You can see the campus on the left. Okay, that's a barren hillside. And when I left that place, we had more than 20,000 full grown trees. Okay, and now it's a thriving forest where we have, you know, all kinds of biodiversity that, that lives there. Okay, yeah. So I got this opportunity, but, you know, again, I did this entire project for the Mahindra World College when I was professor of philosophy there uh, without taking a single pie. Okay, yeah, I just, I just did it during... The vacations during the weekends and of course the students uh, looking at me doing this would come and I had almost 50 students working with me throughout the year on this project okay yeah so this is uh, the entry to that place and on the right hand side you can see a board saying one we are maybe it's a little small on your screen one we are and next to that is a plaque saying that it was inaugurated by the then prime minister Manmohan Singh okay in 2000 and eight Manmohan Singh visited the place and inaugurated this and dedicated it to the nation. Okay, so that, that was a very important part of my journey. All right, uh, I'm now going to stop introducing myself and, and talk about some of the insights, okay? Remember, I'm a teacher, okay? <laughs> I love to have interaction, so please feel free anytime to raise a question, okay? Yeah, I'm, what I'm going to do today is just share a few insights that, that you know, that I have learned in my journey okay and and i'm i'm sorry if some of you have already uh, yeah go ahead somebody was speaking asking a question Hello? No, probably that was that was unmuted by mistake probably okay okay sorry yeah okay so so uh, uh, one of the important lessons that that i have learned in my life is that uh, the ecosystem is something that is very very important okay that that nature uh, functions as an interrelated whole okay yeah so everything is connected to something else and, and in my life uh, that has been a journey to explore interconnections that exist okay between all of life okay unfortunately we as human beings have you know kind of pulled ourselves outside of the ecosystem okay and then i will i will speak a little bit about that later but in nature everything is interconnected. And as Rudrakshi said, there is no waste, okay? Something that is given up by one plant or an animal is taken up by another as food, okay? And, so, and if you look at it, it's, it's a human being that produces waste, okay? Like, like I, have, I have this, uh, you know, my, my keyboard here. And if I, if I don't want to use it, I give it to a tree. Uh, you know, the tree doesn't want it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the problem with us humans that we generate so much waste. Whereas in nature, there is no waste because everything is so well interconnected. Okay, and that, that when I go and set up a forest like I do now, okay, and I have done in the past, it's not just planting trees. Okay, planting trees is one aspect of it. If you just plant trees, most of the trees die. Okay, and that is why we have Vanna Mahotsavs every year. Okay, because you plant and the trees die and next year you have to plant them again. Okay, but if you really uh, planted an ecosystem instead of planting a tree, you would ensure that they survive. Okay, so water body is very, very important. This is actually a photograph of my backyard here. Okay, where you see a small tub with water. There are water plants, there are water bamboos, there are ferns, there are, there are air plants, there are all kinds. You know, just in that little snap, you have about uh, 30, 40 species of plants growing there. Okay, including some medicinal ones that you can't see. There is Neer Brahmi growing there as well 
which is a very important medicinal plant. Okay, Nir Brahmi is uh, one of the really important novine tonics that you find in nature. Okay, and it can be grown quite easily as well. Okay, more about that uh, later. You can ask me questions about medicinal plants. So ecosystem, okay, is the foundation of nature. Okay, yeah. So, so if you look at it, ecosystems are also marked by diversity and diversity among things that you can see and diversity among things that you cannot see. Okay, yeah. And today I'm going to focus a lot on the things that you cannot see, because those are the things that that probably uh, a lot of us, you know, remain uh, you know, uninformed about, you know, in our education, you go to school and you don't learn about those sometimes. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, uh, the diversity of activities that, that you can see. Okay. And these are pictures that, that, you know, happen to me every day. So in this line of work that I do every day is a day of learning. Okay. The new things to be found, new, new species to be discovered and things like that. Okay. So and the ecosystem has all these aspects. Okay. There are honeybees, very, very important. All of us know that the honeybees die out. Human beings probably have four years to live, okay, as a species. We are so dependent on very, very small things, okay, like the honeybees, okay. Uh, the most important thing in the ecosystem at the end of the day is the soil. And I have to talk about the soil because then you will come to know why I'm talking about the soil because it's so intimately linked to who we are as human beings, okay, yeah. So, so most of the soil that we find everywhere, especially in the cities and especially in farms that use a lot of chemical inputs like pesticides, chemical fertilizers, the soil that we find is dead soil. Okay, it's dead soil. So in the forest, if you go into a forest that has been untouched by human hands, okay, you will find living soil. Okay, and, and living soil has, uh, you know, it's, it's teeming with, with life all kinds of life forms, okay? Some seem like earthworms. We are very familiar with earthworms, okay? And lots and lots of it unseen, okay? So there is bacteria, there is fungi, there are algae, there are protozoa, okay? There's all kinds of beings there that, that kind of make that soil alive, okay? And, and it's only the presence of all these unseen things in the soil that gives the soil fertility, Okay, they say that if you scoop up one handful of soil, of living soil in your hand, it has more life than the entire human population on this planet, okay, just in your palm. So that is the extent of life that, it, that exists in, in soil, okay, and, and, and that is what I will say later on, uh, you know, is also the hallmark of organic farming. Why, why do we do organic farming? Okay, we do organic farming because we want to return to food grown in living soil, okay? That, that doesn't have pesticides, that doesn't have chemical inputs, okay? Yeah, so, so living soil is very, very, very significant because at the end of the day, and this is where I make the jump to our own health and well-being, okay? All of us, okay, are also, have, have also evolved from this soil, okay? From the ecosystem. And so there are lots of parallels between a healthy soil, okay, and a human healthy individual, okay, there are lots of parallels, yeah, and and this is this is something I find very very fascinating, okay, because all of us human beings are walking, talking biodiversity parks, okay, and if we are healthy, we are, <laughs> okay, walking, talking biodiversity parks, all right, and as philosophy professor, let me tell you something, okay, so. Uh, you know, from, from the mouth to the other end of our digestive tract, okay, scientists today say that we have more than 17,000 varieties, okay, species of living beings inside of us. 17,000 varieties, and that, that, that's fascinating, okay, and, and in a healthy individual, okay, so if, if there is a person who's taken lots and lots of antibiotics in his life, you may find very, very few. Okay, and so the total number of cells that are not me are about three times. Okay, let me let me put that in some numbers. Okay, to make it a little easier. Apparently, the total number of cells scientists kind of come to a fixed number, and they say that a human and adult human body has about thirty-seven thousand. Uh, sorry, thirty-seven trillion cells in the human body. Thirty-seven trillion. Okay, whereas 
the other things that are there in the human body which are quote unquote not human are about 100 trillion okay so there is more life in us which is not us okay so when i say i am hector who's this i who's this i yeah is is it the 37 trillion cells or is it the 100 trillion other cells that also can claim to be hector mm-hmm. all right so it's a very interesting pehle mujhe pani de yeah so so uh, you know when when we do when i teach philosophy courses we talk about this whole issue of identity who am i you know it's a very important question who am i am i my body am i my mind am i my soul it can be all kinds of things right so these living creatures also have a claim to who we are okay and so uh, that's something that i will just mention here okay and 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 kind of uh, you know maybe i i want to actually share with you a few other things okay uh, related to this these cells apparently the dna okay the the genetic material that exists yeah is is kind of 100 times more biodiverse in these creatures than in us in our cells okay so so that's one thing all right so so you and i okay uh, as as human beings are are in fact very similar genetically okay 99.9% of our genetic material is similar okay one human being and another human being but if you look at the what we call now the microbiome okay all the life that lives in our gut okay their genetic diversity is almost 90% different from one human being to another okay so we are very similar as human beings we are very different when it comes to our gut flora and remember that 90% of our illnesses now are traced to the gut to the stomach so so how how you know can we work towards a healthy microbiome okay that that's an important thing okay and then of course Hector, food is very yes yeah, just just to not to interrupt you but we also have our nutrition team here So yes, I'm wonderful. Sure they will have they will have something uh, to ask you or to share. Absolutely, I'm going to pause very very shortly. Then then we are open to all questions. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy uh, to take any questions soon at the earliest. So of course, all the food that food that we eat is is actually you know food for the microbiota. Okay. In in the soil, the living soil, it's it's the bacteria and and the uh, you know the uh, the the fungi and the algae. all of that they break down organic matter and 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 provide okay and provide nutrition to the plants okay the same thing happens in our gut as well you know identical i just wanted to draw these parallels uh, and i think there's a lot of study yet to be done on the role that this microbes play inside of us okay and and scientists today are relating even all kinds of allergies to what is lacking in in our own micro microbiomes okay yeah so so just a little bit about that and and i will uh, continue with organic farming okay very important uh, a lot of us are familiar so so organic farming uh, one is you know it it kind of gives you a diversity of foods okay and you can see all kinds of okay vegetables there they probably all belong to the same family okay and but there are they are very very diverse this this uh, on the left hand side the picture is a karela that grew in my garden okay with absolute uh, no chemical inputs at all it just we do our own compost and and in our own compost we grow all the vegetables uh, you know that that kind of a lot of the vegetables that we grow in, uh, we uh, we consume okay yeah uh, wonderful uh, the project that i'm busy with just now okay is is building probably as i as i say you know india's biggest food and medicinal forest okay yeah so so why are food forests important food forests are important simply because they can give us food throughout the year okay and they kind of are healthier for the planet than the kind of industrial agriculture that is followed across the world okay so we plant a lot of food trees and these food trees uh, produce food for you throughout the year one example of a food tree is is a uh, okay moringa which is which is drumstick shivga in marathi okay the drumstick tree okay like that there are plenty of other trees which which have been used in india for a long time okay unfortunately we kind of have forgotten the use of a lot of them okay the other thing is what we also do is conserve native seeds okay seeds that have not touched a laboratory okay no, no. hence genetic no, no. modify yeah okay somebody is not on mute probably i can hear some sounds yeah um, so so the work that we do involves okay building this 
food forests on which human beings can sustain themselves. Okay, yeah. So that's the work that I do. I build this really large food forest, food and medicines, because we also have to conserve medicinal plants. Remember that this country had more than 5,000 documented medicinal plants, documented. Okay, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, when you ask people today, most people cannot name even 10 of them. Okay, and if you go go around the city, you don't see, okay, yeah, plants. And and of course, uh, uh, you know, the book that I worked on was on beets, okay, they are, they are not in the established list of plants that you find and, and they're still medicinal. Okay, so, so you plant a diversity and the diversity is important because as I said earlier, some trees like to grow with other trees. You know, what one plant gives out, the other plant takes up. Okay, and so there is a very deep symbiotic relationship that exists in this kind of a forest. Okay, and the native seed simply because again, we are losing diversity when it comes to plants. Yeah, we're losing diversity. Uh, India, they say, had almost, you know, uh, probably 200 varieties of bananas. Okay, and today the, what we see in the supermarket probably is one. Okay, and if you go to an organic store, you may find five. Okay, and the one that you find in the supermarket is only there because it kind of has a long shelf life. There's nothing to do with nutrition. Okay, nothing to do with nutrition. Okay, your, uh, your uh, native banana, and that's also a non-native, the one that you find on the supermarket shelves, very nice, attractive yellow, and, and they remain yellow for a long time. Don't get those black dots. That's the only reason they get picked up and, and propagated. But, but the 200 other varieties that we had in India, many of them dying out. Okay, I've managed to collect about 20 species just now. Okay, and I'm still trying, okay, to find new species. They are sometimes often more nutritious than, than uh, the one that is, you know, uh, put on your supermarket shelf. Okay, so collecting seeds, very, very important. The same thing with rice. We probably had about 800 species of rice in this country. And how much do you get in the market? Not more than four or five again, or say eight, 10. Okay, uh, we have rice that also is, uh, I mean, is good for diabetics. <laughs> okay, but again, we've, we've lost it. We're trying to revive it. The same with wheat. We wheat with is gluten free. Okay, many varieties, not just one. Okay, sometimes now you get the kapli wheat, but there are other wheats as well which are gluten free. Okay, so so all that is something that that we're trying to put together in this project, which will actually sustain communities. Okay, that's a project I'm working on. That you know where a a, a, a human being can li live live. Okay, can live. Uh, in that forest in a completely sustainable way. So, so if you have a lockdown and you're locked in that forest, you can manage. <laughs> okay, so that, that's the goal we are, we are trying to reach. Okay, yeah. Uh, and the last thing, I'm, I'll end, end with this slide. Okay, that's my book. Okay, I, I think if you can see that, okay, Weeds as Food and Medicine that was published last year. Uh, I'm working on two other books. One is on the for forgotten food plants of, plants of India. Okay, uh, lots of very, very interesting, very nutritious pl plants that we've forgotten about. Okay, and, and we don't eat them anymore. And, and similarly, I'm also working simultaneously on a book on, on a book on plants that have been part of the legends of India. Okay, remember that plants that appear in legends, plants that appear in our, in our rituals and religion, all have very, very important medicinal value. Okay, they were put there in the ritual so that we don't forget them. Okay, not because the plant is holy, but because it is medicinally useful to us. Okay, so 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 I will I will pause here. Okay, and that that's kind of I just thought uh, it will be my introductory comments. And now I'm open to any questions, clarifications, anything you can ask because there are limitations to how much one can put in. Okay, of 25 years of uh, experience here into a talk like this okay so i'll i'll stop sharing okay and uh, i'll be open to questions now and and uh, rudrakshi over to you you can now moderate it yeah <laughs> yeah thank you so much thank you so much so yes we will have questions from i'm sure there are a lot of uh, us who are doing some kind of farming at home and even of uh, you know a, a greater level not only at home on the terraces but uh, we have people who are doing organic farming and hydroponic uh, growing of plants also. So I'm sure we will have questions. I just wanted to, you know, go around asking everyone how many medicinal plants do we know? So <laughs> I could think of Tulsi and Neem. So uh, maybe, you know, all of us can put in at least one one each. <laughs> Rami and Giloy. Wow. Yeah. Aloe Vera. Hector, hello. Hi, Priya. <laughs> 
How are you? Hi. Thank you for making yeah, this good. happen. It's thanks to Thank Priya you. I'm here. Okay, she, she suggested <laughs> Indeed, thanks. to Rudrakshi, I guess. And <laughs> she's in a car, imagine. <laughs> she's on the move. She's on the journey. No, no. Yeah, I was talking yes, about the journey. On the move. Yes, on the move. No, no, I'm just reaching home. So, uh, so yeah, nice, nice, wonderful uh, talk, Hector. As always, I love to hear you. And uh, people, anybody in Baner, please feel free to go to Hector's house. Oh, you know how yeah. the, how they make tea? They <laughs> ask you if you like tea and they just go to the garden and pick up some spearmint and all kinds of herbs and they make you some lovely tea. So, Hector, on your behalf, I'm inviting all of them to your place. Most, most welcome. You're always, <laughs> always willing to share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over to you, Rudrakshi. Thank you, Priya. Yeah, thanks, Priya. Thanks. Priya gave about four names, I think. And I did not know two of those. I did not know Giloy. I knew aloe vera, of course. Anyone else? Who does lemongrass to... count as one? I guess. <laughs> yes. I don't know. It does? Yes, yes, yes very you. much. <laughs> Spearmint, basil, holy basil, of course, Tulsi. What about amla? Yes, very much. But it's a tree. Amla is a big tree. But but uh, there is a there is a plant in my book okay called bui amla okay bui amla is you know uh, a plant that that just grows this tall and gets those beads kind of thing on the underside of the leaves a lot of you must have seen those okay it, it is very important to treat jaundice it's also very important to treat kidney stones okay yeah so that's that's a, a small plant called bui amla okay which is also there in my book yeah. Yeah, any any other any other names of trees, and I'll uh, I, I'll ask myself a question, okay? Because I was interviewed uh, a couple of days ago for a magazine, and uh, they asked me this question: What's your favorite plant? <laughs> Do you have a favorite plant? And I say, when when you are familiar with, you know, literally maybe five thousand species of plants, can you have a favorite? It's like having so many children and asked to pick up one favorite, okay? Uh, and I will talk about a medicinal plant which I think everybody should try to grow in their house, okay? And this is, the botanical name is Andrographis paniculata, okay? I could probably type it into the chat probably for y'all, okay? Andrographis paniculata, in Marathi, we call it Kadu Kirait, okay? Yeah, Kadu Kirait, in, in Sanskrit, it's Chiraita, okay? Yeah, um, and all other Indian languages have this, okay? It's a very, very important plant because uh, you know it's it's one of the bitterest plants that you find in the plant kingdom very bitter and something that's bitter is good for health as well because it kind of can purge the bad microorganisms that can live inside us okay but one of the important uh, kind of factor i mean important properties of this plant is that it helps to reduce tumors Okay, and so in the in the treatment of cancer, especially, we found you know this very important. Remember that all of us, in a way, carry tumors in our body yeah, in different forms. And and this uh, the, just a green tea uh, made from this. Okay, early morning on an empty stomach. We we kind of have a schedule. Okay, every Monday morning is a is our uh, you know uh, endographis morning. Okay, so we will have the kaduki right tea tea on Monday morning every Monday morning. Okay, so it just you know you don't need to be ill. You just have it and the body takes what it needs, okay? Yeah, so that is one of my most significant plants. There are a lot of others uh, as well, yeah. Please, please ask questions, anything that you want, okay? And uh, yeah, please, please feel free. Hey, Hector, uh, this is Sujit. Uh, very nice uh, conversation. By the way, uh, if it's the same plant, we call it by the same name in Bengali as well. So, uh, so this, this, uh, this last one that you talked about, it's the yes. bitter one. I think it's the same name in Bengali as well. So yes, uh, uh, possibly, possibly. Okay, Kirate, Kirate, Chirate. It's, it's the yeah. same. Eh? All the languages will have something around that. Okay, I'm not familiar with the Bengali name. Uh, it's, it's, more, name. it's more bitter than bitter god. So uh, or neem. So that's <laughs> it's 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 very bitter. It's very bitter. There's an, an, another kind of you know like this when I talk about the legendary plants. Uh, there's something very interesting said about this plant. That is, that's a belief. Okay, and remember that uh, our uh, Western science cannot actually, you know, prove some of these things. But it is believed that this particular plant is very sensitive to positive and negative vibes. Okay, and so it doesn't grow in everybody's house. 
Okay, so so I've given some to some people many many times, but but it always dies there. Okay, so but in some houses you will find them growing in in the cracks of the road as well. They will be growing in between steps. It will be growing without any care. Okay, so if there are positive energies, this plant thrives. If there are any negative energies, it just dies. Okay, Hector, is that the way? Is that the way you decide whether? Well? Whether to make friends with those people or not? <laughs> Is that a litmus test? No, 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 not necessarily. Okay, I can, I can help them change the vibe sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Thank you. So I was yeah, just going to yeah, mention. Yeah. Thanks, Sujit. Any other question? Yeah. Sorry, Sudarshan. Yeah, yeah. I, I was about to ask you whether, uh, just correct me if I am wrong, but alium sepa and alium sativa, uh, is that, is that right? Is that onion and, uh, and garlic? Garlic. Yeah. 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 So. they are also medicinal yes i mean most of our food plants are medicinal okay and and sometimes we give a lot of importance to onion and garlic but sometimes that cabbage and cauliflower we forget that even that has it's you know like all the things that we eat as food is packed with benefits my only problem is that how is that plant grown how is your onion grown how is your garlic grown that is crucial okay because the same garlic and onion that is grown with a high degree of pesticides can actually be harmful to your health okay so can we see where our food is coming from and that's why uh, you know there's a whole lot of talks that i gave during the lockdown where i was telling people take charge of your food okay take charge of it okay don't depend for your food on on somebody else because there's somebody else uh, who is kind of supplying the food to you okay uh, and and not not all of them but many of them are just interested in making money okay in quick money so your onion can be poisonous yeah and and uh, you know so so the same thing for other food so therefore the the reason why we took over the organic journey in our life was to take charge of our food to know where it is coming from and nothing like if you have the possibility grow it yourself okay grow it yourself because there are so many other benefits to to kind of engaging yourself okay with with plants okay nature is a great healer okay amazing amazing and when you are in nature or even if you are just shown images of of nature and scenery it automatically brings in good feelings because as i said we have evolved from nature okay and you show people images of buildings and and traffic and all that automatically anxiety fear and all those negative emotions are generated in us okay so so if we try and grow our own food in small ways okay it has a lot of health benefits other than just eating and and you know consuming them so hector if you are staying in apartments in cities it's very difficult to grow i mean if you have your own house small things you may be able to grow it's not enough and yes. what organic food you get you really don't know whether it is organic or yes. not yes completely so they will only sell it to you at a higher price saying it's organic maybe the same tomatoes that he picks up from the market yard maybe the good looking ones he will he will say oh hey me organic this is all organic so I mean, I, I, it's like you are gullible, basically. Yeah. No. I Unless completely. you know someone who grows. Yes. And you are able to source yeah. it. Otherwise, yeah. it's just not possible. Especially. It's a, very, it's a very very good question, and and I completely agree with that. Okay, if you are living in an apartment, of course you can maximize all your balconies. Okay, even if you get two hours of sunlight. i say you can grow so much on that okay i used to live in an apartment some years ago and we had four windows and every window had stuff growing every window okay and and you can see certain things require more sun so they go on the sunny side the other ones that require less sun you put it in the shaded areas so you can use you can maximize every window to grow food okay yeah and uh, and the other thing is in places like bangalore this is this is more more kind of common than than in pune okay there are lots of these now you know um, uh, what what we call them you know grow your own food concepts you can you can actually rent out small plots of land okay in bangalore this has taken off a lot in pune i don't find it too much though i know one or two projects that you know can can uh, offer you a piece of land you rent it out for a very very little amount and they help you grow food organically okay that may be an option but i think all our terraces should be used to grow food every building why not every building but there's so much politics in our societies that you know no one wants to do it okay if three people want to do it there'll be two fellows opposing it okay for all kinds of silly reasons but unfortunately if only we could learn from nature 
okay and one of the biggest lessons we learned from nature is that cooperation works conflict doesn't okay that if you cooperate things work okay otherwise imagine this this 37 trillion cells okay if they were to fight against each other we wouldn't be alive okay it's only that this 37 trillion cells in our body cooperate that that we are alive okay but unfortunately with human beings is always fight 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 okay so so kedar i completely uh, agree with what you're saying and it's very difficult to know what's organic and what's not today and and these labels mean nothing so unless you try to find some farmer who will grow it organically or you find a piece of land where you can grow something or you start a terrace venture and grow at least some part of your food yeah there is there is no way out i completely agree with that i should try that i have a good terrace where i can let me try absolutely absolutely and you don't need too much okay and it's not rocket science to grow you know you just need some simple soil some cocoa peat and some cow dung okay and you can start that's it good any other questions uh so hika i just uh, have one question not question exactly but i must tell you that it's a very very interesting session and Thank you, uh, yes so uh, you made a point about gut microbiome which is which is also a very interesting uh, subject and i'm still uh, studying more about it but coming back to the medicinal point uh, plants rather um, i would like to know more about weeds because whenever i go to tekri every saturday or sunday you know i see so many plants around uh, me but then we don't know which are you know uh, which are medicinal and which are not so even for example uh, kadulim there are so yes. many plants on tekri we just pick up one or two leaves and we have it that way but there are so many other plants also which we do not know about so can you just mention one or two uh, maybe the example yeah. Sure, sure, certainly. So, so uh, this this book that I put together during the lockdown, okay, yeah, uh, just walking around Barnir, this has thirty six weeds in it, thirty six weeds, and and fascinating, uh, you know, usage. My my question when I when I started with this book, of course, I have data collected over. Okay, so there are hard disks full of data that I've collected, which you know, in my retirement, I have to sort this, sort it out and put into book form. Okay, my question was this: if everything is locked down. if all the bhaji shops are closed how are you going to survive right and i said you know there's so my so many plants growing around look so i went and the first thing i did was i i documented all of them with my camera i clicked pictures of each and every one okay so the, so there is a second volume possible that there's so many plants growing okay yeah so so definitely all around forget the take peak okay you go into the city you will find them growing all okay and and one of the things i will tell you okay there is one a uh, plant which is actually called the coffee weed okay in marathi they call it uh, tarota okay tarota it has many many names okay and uh, well I, i i probably if you if you kind of uh, uh, you know yeah I, i don't know whether i can show you a picture from my from my book book right away okay if i hold it in front of the camera maybe you'll be able to identify this okay yeah because you all everyone has kind of uh, seen this okay yeah you see where Okay, uh, I'm just showing you the picture. All right, let's see. Okay, can you all see this? This particular, I think, there's a slight shine. Okay, so so this is the the plant. In fact, uh, that that you find on almost every hillside, forest side, you will see this. Okay, roadside, plenty of this. Okay, this is called tarota. Okay, uh, uh, cassia tora. In fact, okay, it belongs to the cassia family. Now the very very interesting thing about this plant is that uh, it gets this sword like beans okay which are about 4 or 5 inches long okay yeah when they dry up if you collect the seeds okay dried seeds roast them powder them you can use it as a substitute for coffee without the caffeine okay so so it's an interesting plant and it's a real good substitute for coffee and and we've tried this and it works very well so you have a coffee substitute going on the road side Okay, yeah. So that was the the kind of the the book. So this is like a field guide. You know, you can actually go with this, and and you'll find like you know all the plants, many of them on the takri. Okay, since you mentioned takri, okay, I was there uh, last yes, week. Yes. Okay, yeah. There thank is. You, a, thank you so much. There now just this one that there is a wild variety of tulsi that grows on the takri. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a wild variety, so you'll find it. Okay, you just have to. Uh, again i don't have images of that just now to share with you but uh, if you take the leaf and just smell them you know that this is a tulsi family 
Okay, just now it's not flowering. In about a month's time, it will start flowering and get exactly tulsi kind flowers, and you will know it's tulsi. Okay, it's a family of tulsi. Okay. So if you take that that plant and take a leaf and just rub it along your skin, okay, which is exposed to the to the air, no mosquitoes will bite you. Okay, oh. so so there are these plants which are almost magical and they're all around us. Okay, unfortunately, as I say, we've forgotten them. Okay, and so therefore, you know, the title of this book uh, subtitle was, you know, the plants that didn't forget us. We've forgotten them, but they've not forgotten us. And wherever human beings are there, these days just grow around. Yeah, thank you, Suvarna. Thank you. Oh, they've been joining meeting with this. Yeah, 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 any other questions? Uh, uh, just, uh, this, yeah, uh, uh, Rudrakshi had mentioned that somebody was, uh, you know, uh, interested in hydroponics. Yeah, so I, I will just... Shashank, Shashank sir is not here. So Shashank Patkar has been uh, one of the myth pitters uh, who has this, you know, who has a garden and I think who has a farmhouse entirely where he is doing hydroponic uh, farming and he also had a session with us so but he's not here today though he would have enjoyed this but he's not here today except that except that you know i, I would have been a discordant note in his life because i don't i don't <laughs> believe in hydroponics okay uh, simply because you know I, I believe in the natural way okay and growing plant uh, plants in water with very limited nutrition is not the way for us to be healthy okay that's my belief I like plants growing in natural soil because when they grow in natural soil in, in what I call living soil, they have access to more than 150, 200 different uh, nutri nutrients. Okay, whereas when you're growing them in water, you're giving them three, four nutrients. They look good, but in terms of nutrition, I'm not convinced yet. Okay, so that would be my discordant note for those who do aquaponics and hydroponics. Okay, yeah, I've never done it in my life. and I don't want to eat hydroponics food. <laughs> I'm I'm very strong. Uh, I have a strong opinion on that. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is actually you were answering that in the middle as well. So when you talk about not using any artificial things to grow your, it's it's completely organic. How long does it take? Because like you mentioned, what if you're locked down, right? And you can't, there are no vegetable markets open. So doing this organic farming without any artificial uh, usage. What's like the time span? Because see, plants, like you, I just saw the picture, 1997, it was a barren line and 2019, it was filled with like, it looked like a forest. No, that's 2000, that picture was 2008. So seven years we had a forest, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah so how, I mean, and how do you do it? How do you maintain it? Is that yeah. really... <laughs> great, great question. Okay, as a rule of thumb, okay, simple rule, any vegetable that you see in the market, it's a three month period, just three months. Okay, so you put a seed from the seed to the fruiting is about two months and then you know you get a crop over the next whole month. Okay, and then if you take good care of them, like I, I have learned to do, uh, your tomato plant, your uh, brinjal plant, your chili plant can last the whole year. Okay, can last the whole year. I had during the lockdown, I had one tomato plant that gave us almost 20 kg tomato. You won't believe it. 20 kg from one plant which went on and on and on. And I felt it was a blessing. Okay. Yeah. I believe in blessings, you know, that come from nature. And it's also because the air during the lockdown became pure. The air was very clean. There were a lot more pollinators. Okay. I found in my society, two bee colonies had migrated in. I saw butterflies that I'd never seen before. I saw the oak leaf butterfly. Okay. Which is, which is only found in the Mulshi hills. It was in my society. It came and sat on my door. And I said, wow, you know, lockdown also has this blessings. Okay. This, this kind of, though no one wants to have a pandemic and a lockdown, but, but because the air became purer, you had so many good things that happened. And, and therefore three months, three months for all your vegetables, even, even rice, even wheat. Okay. You, you get them in three months. Okay. So all your crops and cereals have a three month window. So within two months, you can have them fruiting. Okay, yeah. What I'm doing is I'm setting up forest, okay, which will give you food for a lifetime. Okay, that's the difference. When you grow rice, uh, rice, or if you grow bindi, for instance, in three to four months, you need to replant. Yeah, so it goes into the cycles of three months, three months, three months. And therefore, during the course of the year, most farmers take about, uh, you know, three crops, 
because you know three months one crop is done then you plow and re re-prepare the farm and sow again and then you have another three months and then you know it, it's like that that's the way it goes so three months three months three months that's what agriculture is okay but if you grow a forest that can give you food throughout the year you plant once <laughs> right once and then it just goes on and on so therefore today more than agro agriculture we talk about agroforestry so we're building forests that will give you food for a lifetime okay and that takes time yes that does take time <laughs> Yeah, no, because like you said, uh, the pandemic did make the air pure and we did see some things that we had not seen over the time. That I absolutely agree. So yeah, I'm, I'm really going to try this, uh, you know, start growing our own vegetables. The best to you, Sajjan. Hey, uh, we just have a question from Mr. Surendra here in the chat box. If we can, Rudrakshi, have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. I'll yeah. go to the chat box myself. Yeah, Amrud ke patte ki chai. That's yes. what he has written. Yes. Yes, I mean, lots and lots of, uh, you know, leaves are great. In fact, uh, around, we, we are fortunate enough to live in a bungalow with little land around. So we grow a lot of stuff. So, so many leaves. Okay. And, and Amrud, yeah, of course, uh, you, are, you have greater benefit from the fresh leaves that have just not opened yet okay yeah so the first when you see a, 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 a guava tree growing okay yeah the the new leaves that come are always shut and before they open if you can harvest them and and even add to your regular coffee it has a lot of benefits okay and and coffee gets interesting flavor from those leaves as well so definitely uh, please go ahead and and see what i believe in is is that if you have a good plant in your tree in your garden okay uh, and, and most of their leaves have health benefits for us okay and and please have those teas there are very few very very few almost i think almost nothing that grows in the garden is poisonous to us okay yeah yeah uh, except okay there are certain things that can of course I, I have in my journey of plants found some horrendous plants which can kill you in the most costly ways possible Okay, but uh, most of our plants which are there in the garden, you can make green teas of them and drink. And, and Amrut is definitely one of them. Yeah. Yeah, Andrographis paniculata, Sejal has written. Yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. And Kadipatta, yeah, Kadipatta definitely is a medicinal plant. Okay, I can see it in the, this definitely, I have a YouTube video on Kadipatta, you can probably watch that. Okay, yeah. Uh, amazing, amazing. Along with, along with the, the pan, okay, the eating pan. I have a video on that as well. So you can, so the, those are easy to grow plants. Okay. A word of caution, please make sure you're consuming correct variety of the plant. Yeah. Thank you, Swati, for that. Yeah. Please do a double check. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes plants look identical. Yeah. But they're not. All right. But now uh, in Pune, we have access to, I know that there are some people from other parts of the country, but in Pune, we've got access to a lot of um, Mediterranean herbs, which also grow well in this country now. Okay, things like rosemary. Okay, I mean rosemary and and thyme. These are supposed to be two of the magical plants, you know, in the Mediterranean world. They grow here, and please use them if you have access to them. Okay, yeah, rosemary, thyme, oregano. We we just grow all of them, and they thrive here for some reason. So we are using them as well, and they are easy to identify. You can't make a mistake with them. Okay, yeah. Uh, Hector, hi. I kind of have a question. Yes. Firstly, amazing session, beautiful session. Everybody in my house, we stay in an apartment, but every corner of the house, wherever there's sunlight, it has a plant. So what I want to ask is, uh, since you mentioned you have work going on in Pune, is there any project where, uh, you know, you're okay with volunteers now, uh, you know, once in a while, because I would love to come into a space like this and help it sounds very therapeutic yeah it's wonderful i mean you're more than welcome okay um, i can uh, share my email id and through through rudrakshi you can get my contact details and yeah we always help very very happy to welcome volunteers okay in fact i because i've been the principal of a school i have access to all the schools across the country okay i even now conduct workshops on teacher training so i go across and i get students to come and volunteer so i get army of students sometimes you know like there are 50 students who come and 
they'll they'll help me with the planting or sometimes we just need to pull out a few weeds which are very dangerous okay very invasive weeds so all kinds of work always welcome and you know yeah the day that you spend in that forest the benefits that you get are unending <laughs> okay not only fresh air but just that sense of healing okay yeah that that you experience when you do this kind of work okay yeah it's it's just it's just well i mean i may be writing a book on that someday of of just the benefits of being being in a in a forest and what that does to you okay i'm reading a interesting book just now that documents uh, vibrations okay and that every human being has a vibration every cell in our body has a vibration every tree has a vibration okay and so you know even if you just go and hug a tree for some time or touch it with both your hands you can you can feel heated okay so I, and and it's and it's very believable i'm i'm a very scientifically minded person but i also find some of these alternate therapies very very um, uh, exciting that's what i will say so ketki definitely any time okay um, feel you free and it. yeah and uh, hector i think uh, i think it will also be interesting to ketki take along uh, someone called as manjiri latte one of my friends i don't know hector if you know her but uh, she's into animal and telepathic communication oh so, i know her uh, i know her yeah sorry so, i don't know so, her but i know a lot of other people who are doing the same thing okay it's very yeah. fascinating yeah so uh, we can have some interesting interactions out there and understand that part of the world uh, where uh, you know there are interactions and you know active communications happening you know between human beings and Absolutely. trees and uh, plants and animals Absolutely, I agree with that. Thank you for that. Yeah, this sounds super exciting. Or I'm going to remember. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wonderful. I mean, look at me. I'm excited. You know, I gave up my career as as a principal just to be with plants, and you know, uh, because we have to do this. There's no alternative. Okay, uh, we have to take charge of our food. We have to fight global change, global climate change. You know, these are things that that really and and building a forest actually, uh, you know, for me. Uh, uh you know solves a lot of that we face okay and, and the greatest benefit to is to our own selves okay to our own health and well being <laughs> okay yeah any other question okay uh, other commitments say yeah, at 7 pm yeah you want to yeah there's a somebody is saying goodbye okay so rudrakti yeah, you can take a call on that i'm i'm happy to close here do this no, 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 and then go on Yeah, yeah, that's only if uh, somebody has a, a prior commitment, then they can they can leave. But uh, we can stay on, no problem. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the point be. that Ketki and Anand brought up, I think that it it would be really very interesting to, uh, you know, visit one such place and you know get to learn or get to volunteer and also experience what it is to be in a forest and be in, you know. A, a surrounding which is full of nature and greenery and all of that. So I think that is a very good idea. We should really plan that. So we are coming. Sure, Rudrakshi, please set up a kind of a <laughs> yeah, group definitely. that that is interested in volunteering, and then you can come. You know, any time, once a month, you are welcome also. And yeah. yes, that for the. It will be a picnic. It will be a picnic. Come help for me. Okay, I am always looking forward to help because it's not easy. Okay, when you are building a three hundred acre forest. you always a uh, shot of manpower so please come and woman power also <laughs> you hector you Thank still you. go to mahindra world college yeah I, i still go there more to look after the babies that i planted 20 years ago i just yeah uh, there are some very very rare plants actually when that uh, when we were planting that biodiversity park we traveled across the country to get plants okay so there are some very special plants there and so i'm very much attached to them so i go there and uh you know uh, just monitor the growth and how they are doing and things like that hector yeah. by the way is karan tushar pitre still there he he is yeah he is a young oh. fellow just there so tushar is still there yeah he still so chalo still let's there. go tushar is a friend of mine oh, lovely okay <laughs> okay yeah definitely yeah i i don't know him personally because you know i left mahindra world college 10 years ago so they yeah. have been like yeah so so yeah i don't know him personally but my daughter just finished studying from mahindra world college and uh, so uh, she she just passed this may she finished uh, her 12th standard there so uh, so i i know tushar pitre that day yeah okay. thank you kedar yes any any other questions clarifications or
you know so anything i just have one more uh, thing to ask so i just came across one plant which uh, smelled exactly like odamus so i don't know its name but the smell was same exactly as odamus and it was kind of i think mosquito repellent plant uh, but i'm not sure yeah yeah that the uh, uh, actually called, what what you encountered is a plant called the scented geranium it belongs to the geranium family you just have to feel the leaves and you know your fingers and and i actually have it in my garden and i use it actively okay I take a few leaves rub them when i'm in the garden especially in this season when the garden is infested with mosquitoes okay you just you just have uh, a few leaves and 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 it works okay it keeps mosquitoes away it's called the scented geranium okay yeah i can just probably type now the name See, i i like to use the chat box here mm -hmm. so even if you go to a nursery and ask them for a scented geranium plant you will you will get it okay this this plant uh, Uh, probably is not native to india okay i think it comes from uh, parts of africa and uh, it doesn't flower here but in its native uh, land it does flower okay the all the other geranium plants we use commonly as uh, our um, you know ornamental plants and they have red pink even white geraniums you do get flowering geraniums but this is a scented geranium yeah so you can actually go to the nursery and ask for this plant and and it's a little fussy to grow sometimes okay it doesn't likes uh, too much water and you know it's a very fussy plant but uh, you can grow it in your on your window sill as well with uh, with 2 hours of sunlight it will grow yeah okay. and there are other Thank other you. things as well like like you know lemongrass helps uh, you know if you're interested in keeping pests away lemongrass helps uh, so does um, you know uh, name is not okay uh, but in organic farming we especially use uh, marigold okay and we use uh, corn okay as as natural pest control plants okay if you grow marigold it takes care of all the uh, pests that come in the soil okay so we have in between our plants we have marigold plants growing okay and uh, corn as well corn is a host to a lot of good insects okay which then look after a lot of the pests okay yeah so so definitely lots of this bio control that that we use in organic farming because you are not spraying any pesticides so you do bio control okay so scented geranium would also find its uh, place there very prominently yeah no uh, hey. yeah so no hector question. one question uh, so when we go to the local nurseries and all uh there are a lot of plants which are not native yes yes so how do you identify what is native and what is not native and, and whether you should because there is such lovely flowering plants and you get tempted to uh you know get them uh, home uh but not necessary they are good and especially these days they uh, cause a lot of allergies and all so how do you uh, what are the plants that you should actually avoid avoid kind of? <laughs> so so uh, go to nurseries that deal with medicinal plants and then focus on them okay yeah because uh, the problem is most of the ornamentals that you find in pune are non native most okay so i would go to the extent of saying about 80% of them are not native okay but but i i kind of am not a, a stickler for native plants okay yeah uh, the only thing is make sure that they are safe okay because there are really dangerous uh, ornamental flowering plants very dangerous okay recently a friend of mine put pictures oh we found this flowers we brought them home i said take them out at once they're very dangerous okay yeah so there is there are these uh, datura kind of plants that people like you know so they're pink and red they're very attractive but they're called the devil's trumpet in english okay and and the devil's trumpet because yeah it looks beautiful but it can kill you okay and they are very very dangerous plants as well sometimes the nursery fellows don't know that there are some plants that they sell with even if you ingest a small piece of the leaf a child eats it that that can cause the death okay of that child and and uh, priya i will i was specially kind of focusing on this plants because uh, being in uh, international schools there are very strict guidelines of safety standards okay so there's a whole list of plants that you know that uh, we cannot plant okay including something like this uh, this uh, plant that a lot of us love amaltas right amaltas yeah. amaltas is a you know the golden shower labonum very beautiful plant and yet almost all of its parts are toxic 
okay and and uh, in the and it's in, in it's also amongst amongst us many species of it are not even native uh, you know it's highly medicinal and that's a problem okay all our highly medicinal plants are also highly toxic so if you take them in the right dosage they can cure you you take them little extra it can kill you <laughs> okay so there were children who died when they ate the seed pods of amaltas okay school kids so across school campuses this tree was rooted out okay yeah so there are there are a whole and you can sometimes search okay if you go on the net and search toxic plants you'll get a list of this plant so i mentioned the devil's trumpet very dangerous uh, there are other indo plants as well that we are very fond of which are very dangerous if the leaves are ingested as long as you don't eat them they are fine but if you eat them they can kill you okay so so i would say to play it safe go for native medicinal plants okay yeah native medicinal plants there are some of them are indoor giving you fresh air okay yeah and uh, yeah the, uh, what what else do i say yeah go for marigold <laughs> go for sunflowers you know yeah so it's a good question and yet you'll need training to be able to identify which are dangerous which are not and unfortunately most of our nursery people are not trained botanists yes. yeah they're just doing it as business so if it looks good sells well they will sell it to you <laughs> yes sector hi this gandhali i remember as a kid we used to eat gulmohar flowers that uh, orange color pattas i used to get we used to eat that hope hope that that was safe right yeah that that is safe uh, unfortunately gulmohar is not native yeah oh. it, it kind of has its origins in madagascar i think yeah uh, so it's not native to india and uh, we like the tree yeah but uh, it's not it's not poisonous so it's okay it's a safe and you Bandhan can you are still it. alive so don't worry i know that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> yeah she's Talisa still alive so. so i'm alive yeah <laughs> <laughs> the ones who kind of ate those seeds and died are not here today with us yeah <laughs> true there's a, there's another plant that actually grows in all the hills i don't know whether you see it. it's it's like the it grows it looks like the claws of the tiger you know yeah it's it's called the glory lily Uh, yeah when it when it kind of blooms in the monsoon it blooms okay it it kind of has green initially it's green then it becomes yellow and then it becomes red okay very attractive plant in fact i i i from my earliest childhood i should love those flowers the glory lily okay the botanical name is gloriosa superba okay um, if you eat even a pinch of the tuber you have a instant death okay and they grow in the hills in pune and many of us cut them and bring them home and probably put them uh, in a in the this thing in in the pots okay and and some of the pollen grains if they go, go into your eyes it can damage your eyes ah there it's come yeah this is the one thank you whoever did that beautiful yeah, i did and that I because you mentioned it's poisonous so please see everybody yes, yes, don't get this, this home <laughs> this this uh, this don't bring it home in fact uh, you know it's it's very interesting to pay attention to popular culture and what they say about it in all the villages around pune this plant is called katkati okay katkati so the idea is that you know if if it is growing around your house it creates fights between husband and wife so it should not be anywhere around your house this is a simple way of saying it's poisonous keep it away yeah fight between husband and wife <laughs> it is just a metaphor for saying this plant is dangerous please keep it away so yeah so that's a very interesting question that there are maybe these... it could be the other way around because they fight these plants grow around <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> it's it's possible yeah so so yeah so so that plant which which are just shown in fact this is the time if you walk in the mulshi hills or you go to siyagard you walk in the forest you will find this 100% they grow only in the monsoon and it dies down it, it has a tuber which is very very poisonous okay and it grows and the flowers are most attractive you know so not attra- all attractive things are safe for us that's the message and probably the red color is something to say not in gulmohar but in this flower i'm talking too much yeah some of you could share your experiences also of of poisonous plants <laughs> yeah good and any other question i am enjoying this okay i hope you all are enjoying as well yeah because i know you all are passionate about health and fitness okay i am passionate about plants and fitness okay for this wonderful uh, session with us and i yeah. wish everyone a very very happy happy weekend and yeah. let's plan very soon to visit visit him and also yes, work alongside you. him thank you, 
thank you so much thank you priya thank you so thank much rudrakshi thank you rudrakshi thank you thank you thank you very interesting it was thank very thank you so much and all the best to you all okay wishing you all good yeah. health thank you thank you so much thank you hector share your mobile number or email address mr hector yeah rudrakshi will share it with the group okay yeah she oh, has yeah. yeah sure 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 thank you so much for your thank response. you so much thank bye you. bye Thank, Bye. You. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for your time. I enjoyed the interaction. Bye. Thank you.